Hey, Mark Sutt of HurricaneTrack.com here. Uh, a little after midnight, Eastern Time, now August 25th on the East Coast, still just a little bit after 11 Central Time, and this is your update here, your late evening update. This will actually be very quick, I promise. Uh, I have to get some sleep. You all need to get some sleep. And there's not a tremendous amount to really get into right now. This is just more of an update to let you know some of the things that I've been looking at and to give you a little bit of an idea of what we're going to be doing ourselves going forward to cover uh, Laura, what is going to be Hurricane Laura. It's going to happen. And again, a big shout out to Kari, known as Spooky, on the internets, on Twitter anyway, for making this graphic for me. I really appreciate it. And I have some ready for tomorrow as well. Saves me time. And it just looks better. I like it. So thanks a lot. She's one of our patrons from the UK. Uh, thank you very much, Kari, for all this help. All right, so real quick, looking at Marco, what in the world happened? Well, there's the low-level swirl still right there. Unbelievable. Really, It's really neat to see, fascinating to see. Uh, to me, this is almost as fascinating as seeing a very well-developed eye of a hurricane. It's uh, one of the most incredible phenomena, the eye of a hurricane is not unlike the weather on the planet Jupiter. Very, very amazing. It's very different in terms of everyday weather. There's nothing like the eye of a hurricane and the eye wall. And on the other end of that scale, the fragility here that you see this very low level swirl, the vorticity, there it is. That's what's left of it. This originated over the Ethiopian highlands many, many days ago as an African easterly wave came off the coast of Africa all the way over, and now it's scooting across the northern Gulf of Mexico, almost invisible. And the reason that it looks like this, and you can see right here, look at these upper level winds just screaming across this area. That's why this is happening. It was sheared apart. The low level flow went this way, the upper level flow went that way, and when you do that, it's shearing, right? It's like scissors, it's sheared apart. And people were asking me about that, like, why in the world did that happen? Well, again, there's two rivers of air. This one, you know, a river of air going this way, basically, and then another river of air that was the low-level center of Marco as it came up going this way. And the two cannot coexist. It separates the, the entity. It gets tilted to the point where not much happens. Now, there were impacts over here, Panama City Beach, I uh, had some flooding. I saw James Spann tweet that. So there were impacts far removed from the center. It just goes to show you, you never know. Uh, hopefully there was not much damage and not much disruption and stress. And certainly, hopefully, not any loss of life. I haven't seen anything about that. Um, so there's Marco. We can say goodbye to Marco. And we're getting ready to say hello to uh, Laura, Hurricane Laura. It's not too far behind. Uh, the only inhibitor still is just this little peninsula of land here. I say little. Um, the small area of land left between total open Gulf of Mexico and Laura's circulation. There's some northerly shear, and you can see that because the clouds are getting pushed to the south just a little bit. So the upper level winds are pushing southward, but not strong enough to separate. And so what's going to happen, Laura is going to develop an inner core going to develop that inner core, everything is going to align in the vertical, and it's going to become very symmetrical. The outflow will get established. The pattern over this whole area of the Gulf of Mexico is going to be improving as Laura moves into it, and that's very important to understand. The pattern will get better for Laura. It's not an intense hurricane coming into a negative pattern or a marginal pattern. The pattern is marginal now, it's going to only improve every single hour that we go forward. And uh, the warm Gulf waters, etc., will lead to a very powerful hurricane in the Gulf. And as such, the Hurricane Center, of course, issuing uh, the hurricane watch for a swath of Louisiana over to the upper Texas coast, including Galveston Bay. A uh, very large wind field overall. That's what this orange color, this represents the wind field, tropical storm force wind uh, around Laura. And look at this very interesting track real quick, this very sharp loop that it does. Um, and then I'm telling you, up here, we're going to have to deal with this. I'm going to start talking about this more 
One thing I want to point out, Hurricane Center website, I talk about crowdfunding a lot because that's what funds our work. And and in all seriousness, the National Hurricane Center, the Weather Service, these are the largest crowdfunded weather organizations uh, in the world, at least maybe next to the ECMWF, that consortium that, that funds that. And it's through taxes. Our taxes cover this. And look at all these amazing projects and products. I tried to say product. Anyway, products, Mark, products. Amazing products that are resulting from projects such as wind speed probabilities. Very helpful if you want to understand that. Um, arrival time of winds gives you an idea of that. And look, why is there a black circle up here? Because they are expecting as Laura comes in and does this, that there could be tropical storm force winds up here. I am not kidding. Did you know that? You do now. So news outlets, Wavy, Channel 10 here in Norfolk, uh, Raleigh, elsewhere, Wilmington, you know, these news outlets up here, Richmond, Virginia, you guys need to be talking about this. Yes, this is going to be a huge problem for a huge area of the United States a multi-billion dollar disaster getting ready to unfold. You know how they say, no hype, no fear mongering? Well, we're not gonna fear monger, we're not gonna hype. We're gonna tell you like it is. And if something doesn't look particularly threatening, it's fine, we'll talk about it as such. Hey, this is gonna have these impacts, it's gonna have those impacts. Overall, not expecting much. Most of our hurricanes and tropical storms are that. Then there's instances like what we're going to see with Laura. It's not a certainty, but it looks very likely that we're going to have a major disruptive event and things like that arrival time of winds. These are the clues, all right? The rainfall could be tremendous for a pretty big area. Now, luckily, uh, Laura almost called her Martha, her, almost called it Martha for some reason. Maybe it's a combination of Marco and Laura. Uh, but Laura's going to come up and dump some rain over a large area, so there will be flooding. There will definitely be flooding, but at least it doesn't look like it's going to park over a certain area and just sit there. So again, these products on the National Hurricane Center homepage, the U.S. rainfall potential, and then you can categorize it, moderate risk of flooding, and then you're going to see a big storm surge down along the coast. We're going to talk about that more tomorrow. Just one more quick piece of advice. Um, this product right here, the public advisory, I strongly recommend that you read it and scroll down, especially to this part right here, hazards affecting land. This is what you want to read about storm surge in some areas, 11 feet, seven to 11 feet. That's not good. That's taller than anybody that I know. Lake Pontchartrain, Lake Maurepa, two to four feet and other areas, and I think these numbers are gonna go higher. I really do. I am expecting we'll see eventually 10 to 15 or more as this gets stronger. I think that's coming. And then the other threats, the rainfall, of course, the wind and the surf, very big swells are gonna be radiating out far from Laura over the next couple of days and that will create problems. So please read the public advisory. And one more quick piece of advice, you can go to weather, weather.gov, click on, if you know your geography, where you live. You might say, well, I live over here in the Beaumont area. So you click there, you zoom in, you got radar. This is the landing page for the National Weather Service out of Lake Charles. And they have some really neat products as well. This is all about Laura. This is about the rainfall, the flooding they're expecting. And these are the local products. Folks, I mean, I'm doing well with people helping me in building my map and the crowdfunding and everything. But, dude, I mean, this is incredible stuff. It's right there for you to, uh, to take advantage of from the National Weather Service. So please do that. Please look at these products. Um, and then one of the most important things is, you know, you want to know about your specific area. So you go right there, you click on Beaumont, for example. And in any of these things, you can read um, these right here in red. Read that. Read that hurricane local statement. That's all the information for your local area 
Very, very, very helpful. It's detailed. But what else do you, what else are you going to do? What else are you doing? Nothing's more important if you live in that area than to read this. Do it. This is your homework. Widespread life threatening storm surge, deep inundation, etc. This is the real deal. You guys know this if you've lived there and dealt with it before. Ike, 2008, Rita, 2005, and others, Carla, 1961, all the way back to Galveston, 1900, obviously. Nobody's alive that had to go through that nightmare. Evacuation information is in here. Great, great product. The hurricane local statement. What about where it could end up? Eric Webb tweeted this about the 18Z European ensembles. I talked about ensembles before. And the statement of Houston, we have a problem. He's not trying to be funny. It's a way to get your attention. The ensemble mean, which is the black line right here that I'm going to highlight a little bit heavier. The ensemble mean is very, very close. It's northeast of Houston. Houston sits a little bit more over here, but that's getting dangerously close to the core of a major hurricane and the ensemble guidance in the mean going over an area where four to seven million people live, depending on how you look at it. This is not something to take lightly. The con concave shape of the coast, somebody's texting me, I'll deal with it in a moment. That's not good. And so let's see what happens with this. Um, the bottom line, you need to just assume if you live anywhere from Grand Isle, Louisiana, all the way down here to the coastal bend of Texas, that you're going to have to possibly deal with a hurricane. And then somewhere in here, something like that, is what I call the blast zone, the area of the most dangerous effects. It'll get narrowed down. You know what's coming. And if you don't know what's coming, ask questions of people who have dealt with hurricanes in the past. Your neighbors, people that seem to be on top of this stuff, do not listen to rumors and crazy talk. Just try to dismiss all of that. Find people who you know are on top of this that use common sense and use science as a guide and help. You. that'll help you to get through it because the next day or two is critical for you to prepare for this. What could be a historic hurricane for the United States and in particular an area of the country, the Golden Triangle, the Houston Ship Channel, the petrochemical industry, Millions of people live there, the Colonial Pipeline. There's a lot at stake here, and this is extremely serious, and people need to take it as such. Even a landfall in southwest Louisiana that spares the Houston area would be devastating. Lake Charles, Cameron, other areas around there, sulfur, it's not good. Nobody's going to get off lucky. It's just a matter of how bad is this going to get. Um, and this is one of those times where I am very serious very serious. This is the talk, so to speak. All right. Uh, my plans, I'm currently over in Lafayette, Louisiana with my team. Tomorrow, we're going to go get a few supplies that we need, mainly food and water for the next several days to be self-sustaining. And then we're going to make our way over to somewhere along the Northwest Gulf Coast. That'll all depend entirely upon what the forecast track is for impacts around this area. It's truly dependent on that in terms of where we're going to set up our equipment. Um, I'm going to come back one more time. We've got three high-end weather stations to set up that will measure wind and pressure on a precision level. RM Young Corporation makes that equipment. It's the best in the world. In addition to those pressure sensors, we have three RM Young pressure sensors. We have ten other Kestrel pressure sensors that were donated to us by our patrons on Patreon. These people literally went out and bought them off Amazon or whatnot and had them sent. And we're going to use those. Every camera that we put out will have a pressure sensor inside its box. We're going to capture this from a meteorological perspective in a way that will rank up there in some of the most data rich data, uh, data, data, whatever, co collection efforts in a hurricane ever rivaling some of the universities. And there's just four of us doing this. That's pretty amazing. All powered by our folks, uh, literally powered in more ways than you can imagine through Patreon. Um, so the pressure sensors, the cameras, yes, we're going to put cameras out. 
I don't even remember. Oh, by the way, this is what they look like. That's one of the camera boxes right there. This is one of the ones that was set up over in um, Mandeville. And in fact, I hear the pressure sensor in there rattling around. There it is. Sorry. I wanted to keep this short, and I'm going to try to do so. That's what the pressure sensor looks like from Kestrel. These will go inside all the boxes, and these will give us a pressure reading every 60 seconds. And that gets logged, and we go by and we pick these up later. It could be weeks before we get these back. Who knows? Um, and then we're going to also, these are live cameras, and these live cameras stream through our Hurricane Track Insider site that's connected to our Patreon. That's how you get to that. So go to patreon.com slash hurricane track, and you learn how you can view these cameras. It's just part of how we fund what we do and a way to give back to the people that support us. Um, and it's going to be remarkable. In addition to the live cameras, we have GoPro cameras that serve as backup at many of the sites. And we might think the feed is going to go down, the terrestrial network, we use Verizon. And by the way, two thumbs up for Verizon and how great their network is. They are not a sponsor. They are not paying me or giving me anything to say that. Their network is how we do what we do. So if you work for Verizon or you know somebody that works for Verizon, tell them that I said thank you for building one hell of a network. It's been fantastic for us since 2012 when we really started using it during Hurricane Sandy. And every year since, it's just gotten better. So there's that. But in case that goes down, because, you know, terrestrial stuff gets busted up in hurricanes, we will have a backup camera that's a GoPro that will run for 30 hours or more uh, in high definition. That's pretty remarkable, too. What else? Um, 360-degree video. We hope to capture the core of LoRa using 360 high-definition video. I'll show you that later. It's unbelievable. It would be one of the first times probably ever that anybody's ever done that. And then the ultimate goal is to launch the weather balloon, Herbie, the Hurricane Research Balloon Payload. And if you don't know anything about that, well, wait till you see this. Uh, we want to launch the weather balloon in the eye. It goes up to the stratosphere. It's got two GoPros on it, an array of pressure sensors and other things inside. It gives us its location. It's remarkable. We did it one time in 2017 during Hurricane Nate at 1 o'clock in the morning near Biloxi, Mississippi. Will Laura be the first time in human history that someone has filmed a hurricane from the surface of the earth to the edge of space with high-definition cameras in daylight? We have that opportunity coming up in a little under 72 hours. That's pretty remarkable, and that is funded by those folks right there, patreon.com slash hurricane track the future of hurricane and other weather coverage unbelievable it's i can't even believe it myself it's like a dream come true all the support we're getting so uh, i'll get up in the morning we got some stuff to do then i'll do an update probably do that first actually we will talk more about track more about expected impacts get into the nitty-gritty of that and we'll take it from there all right as always thank you for tuning in I do appreciate it. Hang in there. We'll get through this. Even if it's the worst case scenario, we'll still get through it. First thing we got to do is keep you safe, keep you alive. Everything else we'll deal with as that comes. Um, as hard as it is, we got to keep you alive first and worry about the rest later. All right? That's my goal. Have a good rest of your night. Wish I had better news, but, you know, sometimes you got to face the music, and we'll face that music together and see what we can do. Uh, I'm Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you on Tuesday.